The Buccaneers head into their final stretch of the season, two games under 500 with three winnable games left. We discuss what has to change, and we turn the page to the Cardinals game on Christmas Day. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, Deputy Editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com, joined by my Wednesday partner in crime, the one, the only Mr. Evan Klosky. Check out everything he's doing on 10 Tampa Bay and at 10 Tampa Bay.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at locked on bucks at JRCO underscore bucks and at E Klosky WTSP. Again, we thank you for making this first listen or view of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by ultimate football GM ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise. Then this game is definitely for you to download the game. Just visit ultimate dash GM.com or look it up in the App Store. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo locked on, all caps, all one word, in the game. Evan, the Bucs turned the ball over on five consecutive possessions. Tom Brady had his first four turnover game in over a decade. Mike Evans started off like a house on fire just to be the forgotten man in the second half. What is your biggest takeaway? from the absolute implosion that was Sunday's loss to the Cincinnati Bengals? There are a few. One, how unbelievable they looked in the first half and how that was the team we thought we were getting entering the 2022 year. Two is how bad (laughs) they looked in the second half. But honestly, you know, it it really comes down to blaming Tom Brady. Uh, You know, I – for a long time this season, I was very much like, look, I'm watching a tape. Tom's playing exceptional. Other people around him are stinking and not doing their job. So I don't want to hear any blame towards Tom Brady. These last three games, minus five minutes against the Saints and the first half against Cincinnati, which I would actually, for the first time this entire season, would argue that was more of a schematic result than a Tom Brady result. He's been bad and like really, really, really bad. Just all these stories are coming out. Oh, where's Tom Brady going to go? This or that. Like he's not making a good audition for any team (laughs) to bring him in. Like this is worse than what he was doing with the Patriots when he was, you know, kind of hitting the end of his wick there. There, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's gotten really bad. And the offensive line was horrific in the second half too, which is part of the story. You know, he also wasn't getting the ball off fast. It, it just, just, it was like, I don't know if he's in his head or he's battling an injury, but, but that was just a really, really bad Tom Brady game. So there's a positive, there's a negative there. I'd love to see Brady flip that switch because ultimately he is the deciding factor on whether this team can actually do anything productive and make the playoffs or not. Uh, But ultimately we got sort of the team who we've watched the entire year. Like in the end, you get the averages. I mentioned on last week's episode, right? How let's ignore the, you know, the worst two or three games. Let's ignore the best two or three games. And in the middle is what you have. And the bucks were not as good as they showed in the first half. And I don't believe they're as bad as they showed in the second half. But when you put it all into a pile and you mix it up and you spread it around evenly throughout four quarters, you have an average team. It's average. And the score is indicative of an average team. Do I expect them to have, I mean, it's technically four turnovers, but it was really five turnovers in a game. No, they're actually one of the best teams at protecting the football. So it was really weird to see that stuff. And that's an outlier. Like the one game you decide to 
turn the ball over a million times is the one game you would have won if you just protected the ball. And it goes back to the cliche that every NFL person says you're going to lose more games than you're going to win them. And the Bucks went out with a 17 point lead. They entered a break 17 to three and all they had to do was really protect the rock, pick up a few more points here or there. And I think they would have won that game. And in, instead they, made mistake after mistake after mistake and panicked and fell behind the eight ball. And, you know, this team is not, doesn't have the ability to really catch up like that, you know, unless it's a a two minute drill situation and they need one score, then they, they kind of flip on the switch. But um, I I do want to give credit to to Byron Leftwich for what I saw in the first half. I thought he got away from what was working. And I think that was some of the panic that set in. Um, I, I think also Cincinnati adjusted. A really big concern is that the Buccaneers are an atrocious team in the third quarter. And to me, that's where coaching is greatly exemplified, right? Like coaching with a bunch of like these are like when you have a whole week to prepare, that's where you test descriptive plays. And that's what we saw. We've learned time and time again that Tom Brady and and Byron Leftwich are are pretty darn good at scripting plays out of the gates for the most part. Those drives have worked. Um, we have seen an inability to start off second halves with any sort of production, and that's because of a an inability to prepare for what the other team is going to change, and that puts them behind. Uh, and and it shows in some of the schematic things they weren't using play action anymore, they weren't using motion anymore, and those were things that they were cognitive of in the first half. And then when they had to adjust, they just abandoned it instead of saying this is what we got to do and sticking with it, and it works. Um, so hopefully that emboldens them to say, all right, proof of products in the first half. We have to stay with it regardless of what's happening around us and recenter them. Um, And and then, you know, the defense I thought was actually spectacular uh, given the circumstances. They're really hurt. And even, even though Winfield and Edwards came back, they were banged up. So they got back on the field for a little bit. Uh, But uh, you know, the team pretty much held its own, especially with Vea and Dean out. So um, mixed feelings as I have with this entire season, and um, in the end, you know, it just it, you you let one slip away, which sucks. But that kind of evens out with the the maybe the Saints game you stole. So you're pretty much in the same spot of you know that's kind of this give and take that I tell you. In the end, you are who you are, and um, they're still in control of their own destiny, and that's all that matters. I said it last week. I'll say it again. That Bengals game didn't matter. So even though it, you choked it away, I still don't give a crap about it. You win, you win this week, you win next week, you pretty much won the NFC South. And that's what it comes down to. Well, and it, it mattered so much more for the Cincinnati Bengals, right? Now they, they've separated a little bit from the Baltimore Ravens. They're leading their division. They got the Bills in a couple of weeks, and they're in striking distance of the number one seed in the AFC. So, yeah, to your point, I mean, it was and, – and every player is going to treat a game like it's important. They all totally. win every week. But in the grand scheme of things, that game meant more to the Cincinnati Bengals in their quest than it did for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in theirs. So before we get into a specific look at the Arizona Cardinals, which we're going to do coming up in just a minute, I realize at this point uh, the Bucs, you know, they, as you just said, they are who they are, right? But what do you think, if anything, has to change for this team to be successful the rest of the regular season and into the playoffs? Uh, The number one thing they have to change is whatever they did in the second half, like they have to stick with what worked in the first half that those are the changes we've been asking for Mm -hmm. forever, like forever. And they finally started doing play action and throwing on first down. I think I saw a statistic that in, in, um, First downs that they threw, that yeah. 100% of the time, they had at least another set of downs. And then, um, you know, when they ran the ball on first down, it was 50%. Yep, it's I saw just, the same one. Yeah, so, I mean, it just – now, look, there's an element to this where if you keep doing it, it's not going to be as effective. But but the fact is you were doing motion on, uh, you know, the majority of your plays. You were doing play action uh, 11 of 40 times in the first half. I mean, that's sort of what I want to see. I mean, that's about like 30%. Um, 
you know, you know, in between 25 and 30 percent. You have to keep doing it. And Brady is successful at it. He's you got to work with your personnel and just do it the whole game. And I love the insistence to get it to Mike Evans. Mm -hmm. Give credit to Cincinnati. The second half, you know, when teams take away Godwin and Evans, what's your solution? So that, you know, that's the chess match of football. And you have to anticipate that stuff. So um, I just I just think they need to stick with what the analytics say. Hopefully Byron is focusing on that a little bit more based on what I saw and what we all saw was a, a seismic change in philosophy. Stick with what's working. And I would say keep chopping wood on the defensive side of the balls. I think mo more, more often than not, the defensive side of the, of the ball has been dependable. And um, I just think that, that Bowles has a good grasp on that unit when we take the totality of the season. Just keep doing what you're doing, but you you got to force more turnovers. And there were more electric plays there in the first half. And you were, you were for, you know, you got the, the tip, you got the pick from Carlton Davis. You were forcing things to happen. You were being aggressive. And then you, you went back on your heels and they were able to pick you apart. So the, the, the biggest thing is, is you got to get the offense going because I will go to war with this defense in the playoffs, but, but the offense, man, I mean, you can't score more than twenty points. You ain't making the. You ain't gonna make it to the playoffs. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna do what you have to do these next three weeks. Well, we are going to talk about the first team in that lineup coming up in just a moment. But first, look, I am really, really excited about our new par partner and sponsor of today's episode: the mobile game Ultimate Football GM. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing? your football franchise, your dream can come true. And this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, signing players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, all the ups and downs of a season. Look, this game is super easy to navigate. It's really fun to play. And it offers challenges that you won't get anywhere else. The stresses and joys of running a pro football team, a coaching staff, and all the finances. And let me warn you, those of you that play, watch the finances. You're going to see a big chunk of money when you start this. And you're like, oh, I can get this free agent. I can get this coach. I can get this guy. Mind your money. Because there's plenty of times that uh, your owner is going to threaten to fire you if you're in the negatives towards the end of a bad season. Locked on Bucks listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code locked on all one word, all caps. Very important. You use that promo code locked on in the game store, all caps, all one word. So make sure to check it out today to download the game. Just visit ultimate dash GM.com or look it up in the app stores. That's ultimate dash GM.com ultimate football GM. Start your dynasty today. This episode is also brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find a sneak peek of Think Like a Champion available right now as a bonus episode on Locked On Presents. Here, two-time Super Bowl champion and MVP Von Miller deliver sharp insights about performing at your highest level in moments of extreme pressure or NCAA champion Tim Tebow discuss how to find your unique personal mission in the world. Each episode features interviews with Olympic medalists, NFL stars, and business leaders. Head over to Locked On Presents for a sneak peek of Think Like a Champion or catch the full series available anywhere you get your podcasts available everywhere now. Audible, get in the game. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view of the day. For the biggest headlines in all sports, make your second listen. Locked On Sports Today, available on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Evan, let's talk about Christmas Day. Let's do it. Let's talk Why about not? jolly old St. Nick, stockings full of candy, children are giggling and happy, and the Buccaneers are going to play the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are going to be without Kyler Murray. Their backup, Colt McCoy, is kind of in question right now. Looks like Trace McSorley is going to be the quarterback. They have, one of the, they have one of the worst defenses in the league. Their running game isn't anywhere close to the threat that it was last season. They do still have DeAndre Hopkins and Hollywood Brown. 
But why should Bucks fans be confident that their holiday isn't going to be completely ruined? First off, they shouldn't be confident because this team has given them zero ability to be confident. The fact That's that why you're supposed to give them confidence. Look, you know, <laughs> as my mom always said, but you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Um, the fact that they're six and a half point favorites on the road, a place they have not won on the road uh, since week two, albeit the Cardinals suck at home. Um, you have so one uh, one of these opposing forces will have to come. You know, it's. Um, it's going to be an interesting situation because while the Cardinals are completely dead in the water and a lot of changes coming, I mean, Cliff Kingsbury is for sure toast. Um, no Kyler Murray. They're eliminated from the playoffs. There is no incentive to fight anymore, but it's on Christmas. It's a primetime game against Tom Brady. I imagine this is going to be their last hurrah. Like I would fade the heck out of the Cardinals the last two weeks, but in prime time, I think you're going to get their best effort, which is, any best effort from an NFL team, I don't care what your record is, is a, a, a tough proposition for you. Having said that, um, the Buccaneers should be able to take care of business. Uh, Trace McS Now, Todd Bowles doesn't have the best history of handling mobile quarterbacks, and McSorley is going to give them the ability to, you know, I mean, Kyler was going to do it in a much more painful way, but um, McSorley does have elusiveness. And um, for a team that's failed to kind of get pressure in the pocket, um, you know, we saw a little bit of, of kind of what like Brock Purdy was able to do of manipulating his way around things and not really getting that many sacks. And when you did, you, you had an awful hit out of the, you know, the first play of the game. But I think for the most part, this is a great chance in a primetime scenario for Tampa Bay to get back on track and begin this trek towards the postseason because as sour as the taste is right now about Tampa Bay, you win, you win, you win, you enter the postseason on a three-game winning streak, and the narrative that we hear right now completely flipped. You're going to hear, oh, Tom Brady in the playoffs again. He's got his team humming. They fixed some of the issues and this and that. Um, and and throughout the season, at least, um, I will say this. They, they've lost to some bad teams. Outside of the Carolina game, which I told you is in that outlier of, of the, the three worst games that they played this season, they're usually in the fight and they're beating themselves. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, listening to Tom Brady on his let's go podcast, I think he's more motivated than ever to kind of correct things. He took the most culpability I've ever heard him take publicly in after a loss. I mean, he's usually, he always takes culpability, right? Like I got to play better this and that, but on sure. multiple occasions in that podcast, he, I sucked. I turned the ball over. That's losing football. I got to be better for the fans, the team. I mean, this is, you know, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to study harder. I'm going to change it. And I think he was speaking a little bit to his team as well. Like, you know, get no sulking allowed. Like, it, you know, I'm stinking and I'm going to work harder. Um, but, you know, the, if you want black and white terms, like the Bucks are the better team, but the Bucks have been, the better team in multiple games this season in black Absolutely. and white terms. It's just a matter of, can they keep their composure, stay in the fight and stick to the game plan, which is successful of what we saw in that first half. And even if you do the first half stuff and it doesn't work out, I'm okay with, the, you know, to quote John Cooper process over outcome, right? You're not going to like yeah. score in every possession that, you do all that stuff. Like eventually they're going to catch on. They're going to, they're going to make adjustments. They're going to figure it out, but just stick with it. Just stick with it. And that that's not like sticking with the run, which is a, you're just gonna have to attack that next year. It's not working. Do it where you can sprinkle it in there. You, you did a good job of that effectively in the first half. Um, so obvious key is uh, first off rattle McSorley. Uh, make sure that he is not comfortable in the pocket, create pressure, and this defense should eat his lunch. On paper, this defense should eat his lunch with the exotic schemes that Bowles can dial up with the team being fairly healthy. I, I don't think Vey is going to play in that game, but, um, you know, you stop James Conner, you stop Hopkins, I like your chances. you got yeah. two guys to worry about, two. Do like, I, I better see bracket coverage on Hopkins and – worrying about stopping the run and just let's see what happens from there. 
Um, let McSorley beat you and then adjust from that standpoint. I also would love to see the Buccaneers utilize the tight end more in this game because Arizona stinks against the tight end. They are, the, like I think, statistically the worst team at defending the tight end. And that would mean me seeing a lot more Kate Otten than Cameron Brait. All respect to Brait and everything he's done for this organization. But I never want to see a back shoulder fade to Cameron Brait on third down again. I like stop trying to make fetch happen. I don't know what Kate Otten needs to do to prove that he is the guy, but he's consistently proved to step up on big downs in big moments, make those plays, and he's just he's just a much better offensive threat than Kate Otten. And I understand you got to flash it sometimes to show that Cam Braid is, is a threat to catch the ball as well, because, you know, there's some little things in it, you know, Kate Otten's not a perfect blocker and there's some other little things that, that I prefer Braid on, but um, you know, in this game, in this game, Otten needs to be the guy. And I, 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 I think he, he can turn it, turn it on this week. Yeah, I mean, our our listeners know that I am a big Cade Otten guy, and, and that's exactly what I was going to bring up next is the fact that Arizona's defense against the tight end is the worst in the National Football League. And yeah, I I don't I don't understand, as you said, what does Cade Otten have to do to make sure that he's getting the bulk of these targets? I mean, against Cincinnati, the very beginning of the game, twenty one yard catch and run, then all of a sudden. There's forced passes to Cameron Brait in the second half when you're trying to crawl back in it. Give it to your more explosive player. I, I love Cam Brait. He's a great guy. He's done a lot for this, this team over the years, but he's not Kate Otten. And I realize that's odd to say, considering this guy hasn't even played a full season in the NFL yet, but Kate Otten is your better player in the passing game, and the Buccaneers have to use that. It, against the Arizona Cardinals, they, I would be throwing to Kate Otten at least once every three third downs because he's going to move the sticks. And There's no for, doubt about it. And for me, the creativity that I would love to see more from the coaching staff is, man, give me, give me some really exotic passing packages that look like runs with Keith uh, Otten and Brait on the field. And, and send them all out. If they're, they're that bad against the tight end, stretch their linebackers completely. And and one of them is going to be completely open. It just I, – I you can't do that the entire game. But, again, going back to play action and working that mm -hmm. in, that's how you do it. You put that you put in that formation. It's, I'm sure it's very run heavy when teams are studying it entering the week. You throw in a couple of play action plays, I guarantee you a couple of them splash. Those are the things – the next level type stuff and not saying I'm, I'm some guru. It's just like, a, I'm, I just see such a basic level of this is what we're doing and not enough adjusting to what the opponent sucks at and, and trying to enforce your will in that weakness. That's, that's what I mean. I'm not trying to say I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm trying to say that I haven't seen enough of the game planning to your weakness in matchups. It just seems like they do what they do. And a lot of the times what they do is terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, Evan is going to pull out that crystal ball and tell you exactly how your Christmas day is going to end this week. But first this holiday, find what you love at total wine and more with so many great bottles to choose from. It's easy to find a new favorite single barrel bourbon or Perfect gifts for everyone on your list with some help from a friendly guide and all with the confidence of knowing you found something special for the lowest price. Love what you find only at Total Wine and more curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly. B21. Wrapping things up here on a WTSP Wednesday edition of Locked On Bucks podcast. Make sure that you are coming back tomorrow. David Harrison and Alex Clancy join up for Crossover Thursday. Going to be an interesting one. Um, 
I think I think Alex is probably the most miserable of all the locked on <laughs> hosts. He is having a rough go. Oh, Not man. a Cliff Kingsbury guy. So I'm sure uh Bucks fans are going to be entertained by his takes on the Arizona Cardinals. But Evan, let's get into your predictions. We have the bold prediction, the player prediction, the score prediction. Let's kick things off with your player of the game. Player of the game. Mike Evans. We yeah. saw we saw the the commitment again to the wide receiver, which I don't know why it vanished for a month, but it did. Obviously, there is um, some added importance into getting him the rock. They got away from it. I think they're going to be like, okay, we need to go back to that more. Uh, but also, we still have not seen a touchdown from Mike Evans in since week four against the Chiefs. And if uh, I had gotten one against the Bengals, guess who wouldn't have been eliminated from the fantasy playoffs? Yeah, that's right. And um, also, his red zone targets are down. I think uh, last, yeah, last year he had 23 targets in the red zone. This year he's at 12 targets. So this is one of those, like, correcting to the mean i think uh arizona who is the worst red zone team in the league they give up a touchdown nearly 70 percent of the time when opponents hit the red zone this smells like get the ball to mike evans within the 20 pepper 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 so i, I think evans has a couple touchdowns talking 100 yards this is a classic mike evans game this is like the yes finally this is the guy i remember and um, I think he explodes in this contest. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to put you on the spot here. You got to put your stamp on it. Does that mean that Mike Evans is hitting 1,000 yards this week? He needs 112 against the Cardinals to get to 1,000 on the season for the ninth straight year. Oh, man. Uh, uh, real close. I, I think it's going to be like – I'm talking like three or two yards within that number. I think it's going to be – he's going to be like three or two yards short. Okay. All right. Well, at least at least we're getting closer to him getting yeah. that number because he was in doubt there for a minute. Yeah. All he, right. Luckily, he worked himself up some good buffer room. <laughs> All right. What is your bold prediction for this one? Uh, bold prediction. Uh, the Buccaneers give up no touchdowns. Ooh. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Right. All right. If they you're, if they're giving up no touchdowns, I'm I'm guessing you're not going to have a goose. For the Cardinals, maybe maybe a field goal or two, but what is the score prediction for the Bucks and Cardinals? My score prediction, Buccaneers 24, Cardinals 9. Okay. Uh, I think that um, – I think this is a get-right game, but I also think this is a game where the defense really dominates. Offense finds some rhythm. They're going to stink it up like they usually do at some portion, three and out here, three and out there. They're going to limit turnovers, and as long as they don't lose this game, they're going to win this game. So I think the emphasis all week, especially for Tom Brady, who's the greatest to ever do it, don't turn the ball over, Tom. Don't turn it over. So I think we're going to see him be a little bit more safe, which is okay in this game. But uh, I also think that um, after maybe like a hot start from Arizona where they play with their head on fire, with their hair on fire, hopefully their head's not on fire, their hair on fire, um, they're going to – regress back to what they are, which is a crappy football team. And even though the Bucks are a crappy football team, they're better than the Cardinals. So 24-9, let's get some positive vibes rolling. All right, yeah, and if Carlton Davis plays the way he did against Jamar Chase yeah, like, uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, it's going to be a long I, day for D-Hop. I'm glad you mentioned that, and I should have mentioned that in the first segment. But but uh, his Unbelievable game, just completely okay. overshadowed by the choking in the second half. He just like a huge tip of the cap to step up. That is why you gave him the fat contract in the offseason. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. That is the Carlton Davis that we all know we can see week in and week out. Maybe maybe there's some frustration there that he, he kept in check one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League for a lot of that game. Now he has the opportunity to do it two weeks in a row and do it for two halves instead of being put in some bad positions. So going to be a good one, Evan. I appreciate you, brother. As always, want to thank each and every one of you for making Locked on Bucks your first listen or view of the day. And, of course, make your second listen, Locked on Sports Today, the biggest headlines in all of sports. 
You can check it out on YouTube, Odyssey, and wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out everything Evan is doing over on 10 Tampa Bay and at 10tampabay.com. Check out my work over at bucksnation.com. And of course, follow everything on Twitter at Locked on Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at D Harrison 82. And E. Klosky WTSP muscle memory kicked in right there <laughs> at E. Klosky WTSP. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire those cannons. And we thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.